Welcome to the Last Life Ever podcast. My name is Jeffrey Holst, and that is Jillian Sidoti. So you switched sides on me. I got confused. You're still muted, Jillian Sidoti, but that's all right. Someday we'll get it right. Someday we'll get this all right. <laughs> Uh, today on today on the broadcast, we have a very special guest. Amy Nance is going to talk about how she took her family on a sailing cruise. I don't know a cruise around. Let's go, <laughs> with, let's go with sailing trip around the world. Sailing the trip around the world, and we're going to do it right after this. Help me, my brother, can you lend me a hand As I walk through this land of confusion If we give to each other, then there's nothing to take Let's live life for the moment before it slips away Hello, Amy. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Oh, great. Because we have so many questions. Both Jeff and I are avid travelers. I mean, obviously not now because of COVID-19. But uh, one thing I have been planning for, and I actually have a savings account for it, is to take a trip around the world with my children, not necessarily sailing, but traveling because we don't know how to sail. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But taking a trip around the world, and so I am just, I am just over the moon to talk to you, and I have so many questions. Uh, so the first question I have is, how many kids do you have, and when? How old were they when you guys started doing this? Uh, so we have two daughters, mm -hmm. and um, they are fifteen and seventeen now. But at the time that we left, they were nine and eleven. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. What made you make this decision to like decide to just pick up and and travel around the world? So this decision was actually years in the making. Um, we always knew we wanted to do something. We just didn't know exactly what. And so for a few years, we had mulled around different ideas. Uh, my husband uh, could have done his postdoctoral in um, France, you know, maybe at the Pasteur Institute, but uh, something went wrong with that idea. Uh, we <laughs> thought about thought about maybe buying an RV, um, but at the time that we were making these plans, that gas in California was like five bucks a gallon. Oh. So we're like, okay, great, we'll make it maybe to Arizona if we're lucky. Um, and then really it was just, my husband had uh, been online and saw other families that had bought sailboats and started sailing. And so um, we chartered a boat and we took it to Catalina Island and just as a test, you know, see, does everyone get seasick and throw up or is this going to work? And after a three day weekend, we were, that was it. That's what we were going to do. So oh, wow. that, were you, you guys weren't sailors before that? No, not really. No. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Oh yeah. That's, no. Um, that's crazy. So, well, yeah, one of the contingencies was that um, my husband had some some prior sailing experience, uh, but it was, hey, I need you to go and at least take some solid lessons, uh, which he did. And then, of course, the idea was is that after we sailed off, um, he would then teach the rest of us, which eventually um, he did. But, uh, yeah, we, we you learn you learn along the way. So and that's what we did. OK, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. this huge, huge impression before we started that you maybe had, you know, been sailing all your life and this was your passion. Holy moly. Okay. Yeah. We got to back up for a, a lot of seconds here because uh, there, it, what about the Indian ocean? You hear like all these stories about the Indian ocean, sure. like yeah. uh, tell it, tell us how you prepared so to go out. So, I mean, um, originally we were only leaving for maybe 18 months and we were going to sail just from San Diego and 
into Mexico and, and that was going to be it. And we did end up staying in Mexico for the better part of about a year and a half to two years. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we literally just kind of learned along, along the way. Um, you know, I mean, we weren't totally naive. Yeah, uh, understanding the rules that that there are established out there, um, but it's it's kind of like anyone that might go and buy, say, like a class A RV, uh, and they've never driven one. Like you learn, um, you kind of figure it out. So, um, so really, well, wait, can can I stop you for a second? So you said something please. really interesting there. You said originally we were only going to go to Mexico for like 18 months. Like sure. that was no big deal. Like uh, everyone goes to Mexico for 18 months. Well, um, yeah. Well, to be <laughs> fair, I mean, it was also, um, we didn't know. I mean, were we ever going to run out of money? Were the kids eventually going to hate it? Uh, I think part of our 18 month plan was also to appease grandparents um, and and maybe the, the family members that were scared for us or, um, worried about us. And then um, we eventually proved to ourselves that, wow, this is amazing. We're having an awesome time and this is actually very affordable for us. So why would we stop? Wow. That's yeah. So, crazy. so, all right. So you, um, so you started by, you know, a plan to go for a year and a half and then you ended up going for how long? Um, we were on the boat a total of four years. <sighs> Four years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And it, yeah, it's yeah. the longest we've ever lived together as a family was on our boat. That's um, and I'm, how big of a boat are we talking about? Like I it mean, what, was a 45 foot uh, catch. Um, we, we are, I loved our boat. I still do. <laughs> uh, each, each of our daughters had their own cabins. They had their own uh, oversized bathroom. Well, it's on a boat, it's called a head, um, that, that, that they had access to. We had a really nice um, uh, cabin for, for my husband and I. And, and so it was, it was spacious and uh, we squeezed it all into 45 feet. <laughs> wow. So, okay, so you, you're gone, you leave when they're nine and 11. Mm -hmm. And so you must have just returned. Because you just said they're. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I so you couple, returned a couple, years, couple ago. years ago. We yeah. we returned about eight months before COVID. Oh wow. Okay. And and have kind of regretted it ever since. <laughs> no kidding. So, well, um, that, yeah. let's no no no. Let's get let's get into that. Where do you wish you stayed? Um. Well, so we actually ended up selling our sailboat um, in Fiji. And um, our youngest daughter, we had adopted from China um, mm -hmm. in 2006. And we had always told her, hey, we, we want to take you um, to China. We want to show you your, your culture and your country. Um, and when we said that, we were anticipating that to be, you know, like maybe a three week trip. It turned into we moved to China from Fiji um, and um, lived and worked there for a year. Wow. So we actually moved to the States from China um, a, a, a not quite a year and a half ago. No, I, I, what made you decide to sell the boat when you were in Fiji? Oh, gosh. Um, well, because like to what you were saying before, um, you know, the Indian Ocean is, is, um, is not friendly necessarily. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think... Well, part of the problem problem <laughs> was that we had, we had actually weathered cyclone season on our boat in Fiji, and it's just hot as all get out. It's the humidity <laughs> is off the charts, <laughs> and the brain starts to kind of fry, and you're like, "Oh my god, am I really having a good time anymore or not?" And so, um, oh, wow. And and honestly, uh, you know, you got to look at a map and decide. All right, where would we want to go from here? What interests me? Am I willing to cross an Indian Ocean? Uh, what 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 do I really, you know, where along the way might we be able to stop and work if we have to? So um, it it all just boiled up to you know what? Instead of taking a trip to China, why don't we move there? Did you? Oh, so, wow. you so you moved to China? To, I assume to work, right? To generate more revenue because. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're really transparent. One thing I like about your website is it's super transparent about what you spent. You talk about, yeah. you know, for this month we spent, and it, it's like 3000 a month or something like that, maybe less in some months, yeah. maybe a little bit more in another. But, but I mean, that's 
not that much money, $30,000 a year or something like Correct. that. For, yeah. for a family of four, yeah. Yeah, to travel yeah. the world too, right? I mean, that's an impressive, you know, I mean, it starts to be affordable, right? But but at the same time, you, you know, how did you make money when you're on the road? Like it's or um, on the water, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. So for, for the majority of the time, um, we didn't make money. Um, the majority of the time we were able just to live off savings um, because we had sold our home and everything we owned and our cars um, to, to be able to buy the boat and afford the trip. Uh, we did take a small break about um, a year and a half in. We did take a small break and work in the States for six months because we had committed to crossing the Pacific and uh, French Polynesia is not cheap. <laughs> so um, we did take some time put the kids back into public school, worked for six months, got back on the boat and then went across um, the Pacific. Wow. So I love this. This is so exciting. So did you live on the boat everywhere you went or did you oh, like get yeah. off the boat? You did. Um, just about everywhere we went uh, there, our first summer in Mexico, uh, we had heard uh, about spectacular places inland. And so we had decided to do what's called haul out our boat and uh, put our boat on, on dry land. Uh, we bought a minivan off some guy <laughs> and, ah. then, and then drove inland and lived for about three months in San Miguel de Allende. Oh, I think I saw pictures of that. Yes. Keep, yes. Keep, it, it's yeah. awesome. Um, and, and that was great because that gave us time to invite our families to come visit us uh, when we could entertain and, and accommodate them. Uh, we learned to speak Spanish. Um, we got to immerse ourselves in the culture. So we did take about three months and, and live on land rather than on the boat. Oh, very cool. Uh, so, okay. Then... The kids, I'm assuming you're homeschooling them mm -hmm. on, on a boat. Um, you're, you're not working. You're just living off savings, living the life, uh, exploring the world. Uh, really exciting. Were your kids happy, disappointed, excited? What, what was their mood when they came back? Oh, well, <laughs> so when we, when we decided as a family, because we decide everything together, um, when we decided that we wanted to sell the boat, I think we got a little excited about the idea of like going to China and living in China. But, um, the last month I, they probably cried every day. Um, they still cry that we're not on our boat. Um, <gasps> really? Know, oh yeah. They know that we're in the United States because they asked us to come back so that they could have a normal high school experience. And then, like I said, I mean, COVID hit and it's been anything, but, um, but I, but I feel like it's good um, because I feel like they've seen other things. They know what else is out there. They know what alternatives are to um, to, to staying here. So, um, yeah, I mean, our house is fully decorated with all things, you know, boat related. Um, and then when we did sell our boat in Fiji, I actually sold it to a high school friend. So now I live vicariously through them and watch them and their daughters enjoy the boat like we did. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So uh, I want to actually go back even back again to, you know, starting this trip and, you know, you, you, you're really not sailors. Uh, you, your husband's done some sailing, but you're really not sailors per se. Yeah. What did you do and how long did you take to prepare for this trip? Oh, wow. Um, so let's see. Um, we, we bought our boat in, um, in February, we moved on her full time in June, okay. while still working. The get the the kids went to school, and from June until say January, uh, constant boat projects, constant upgrading, checking of everything, um, and then you know Costco runs, made <laughs> Costco runs. Um, I mean the the entire boat was completely loaded down with. Um, and I don't know why, I'll be honest, it's not like Mexico doesn't sell food, <laughs> but, um, you know, preparing in that sense, um, uh, putting everything in storage that we didn't sell, we whittled it down to about a 10 by 10, um, making sure that all our uh, important paperwork with, was with the family member, um, putting that family member in charge of bank accounts and everything else um, 
financially responsible, forwarding our mail, things like that. Um, and then the other giant task was preparing for homeschool. So mm. um, I'm a teacher and my husband's also a teacher. And so um, unlike a lot of parents, I was thrilled about this. Um, I was eager to, to, to homeschool. Um, and so I prepared uh, curriculum. I built curriculum uh, to last us from fourth till about ninth grade. And oh, wow. so that was a that was a large undertaking. Most people don't. I'll be honest. Uh, most people do what's called buy a school in a box. Um, mm -hmm. You can buy a program, and they literally send you an entire box. It's a year's worth of material. Um, but I decided I didn't want to do that, so um, I spent a lot of time creating my own. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's. I mean, so, you know, there's so many things. <laughs> so I, I want to, I want to get to the why behind this, though, because you know sure. how you did it is one thing. I mean, we can talk about you know how you got visas and stuff like that, because I'm sure there was a lot of that kind of paperwork and everything. But, but what possessed you to think it was a good idea to just pack up and leave? Like, sure. what was the driving force? The American dream that turned into the American nightmare. Um, we both had successful careers. We were both doing very well. Uh, we also never saw our children because of it. So, um, oh, hi, yeah. hi, Amy. Welcome to the Last Life Ever podcast. I'm your host, yeah. Julian Sidoti, and that's Jeffrey Hulse. Why don't you ask us why we created this podcast? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, uh, paying nannies to raise your children because you're not there. Um, it just sucked. It was it was kind of like that little moment of truth. Like, why are we doing this? Um, you know, it, it just just wasn't really us at the end of the day. But it's easy. You get kind of wrapped into, um, you know, your your house and your cars and your career and, and all this, and then you you just don't realize. For most people, I think that wow, I'm really missing out on um, on family time, like quality family time. But mm -hmm. so that, okay. I, I guess I get that. I mean, I don't have children, so I can't really understand it exactly, but, but, but didn't, didn't you miss your stuff? Like, didn't you like get out on the boat and be like, I, I miss that like photo album that I used to look at every day. Not a chance. I cannot tell you. <laughs> That's the worst. No. The answer to that question. <laughs> I cannot tell you how, um, awesome it feels and liberating just to sell most of your stuff. And then at the end of it, when people are trying to nickel and dime, you just say, take it, just take it. I mean, I don't know. I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't want to responsible, be responsible for it. I'd say the biggest change coming back to the States after not really owning pretty much anything is I own all this stuff now. I don't want to own my car. I don't want to own my couch and, and the lawnmower. I don't want to look, I don't want any of it. Yeah. So I mean, so and, and we had a 10 by 10. So the photo albums, the family dinner table that my, that I raised my children at, I've, I've got those things, but everything and else. So the stuff it. that was in the 10 by 10 though, like, did you, you didn't really miss that either. I mean, oh you God. knew it was there, like when you needed it, it would be there for you, but. Are you going to miss that when you're sailing into French Polynesia I after mean, 24 days at sea? No. That could all burn and it wouldn't matter. I, I would absolutely miss my Picasso if I was 24 days at sea. Well, <laughs> no, Jeff, stop it. You're ridiculous. Listen, uh, he's, he's ridiculous. But uh, I, 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 I'm picking up what you're putting down, Amy. I love it. I, I just, you're, you're singing my song and I'm on a constant quest to get rid of stuff. I, I totally get it. Um, and I just this is just so fascinating and amazing to me. Were there any times that you were like terrified out in the sea? Were there any moments? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so probably our first uh, our first passage. Uh, we sailed from San Diego to Ensenada to be able to check in. You have to check in with the authorities. Okay. And, and then um, being being eager to get going, we pretty much ignored the fact that there was a storm. We kind of looked at it and tried to uh, tell ourselves, oh, it's on its way out. It wasn't. Um, and I, <laughs> it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, I had a child throwing up. Um, I oh. was threatening, I was threatening divorce. Um, oh. it, it, yeah, it really, it, it really sucked, but you learn. I mean, in, unless you're not smart enough to learn, we learned uh, never, never again would we have made that mistake again. So uh, we found an Island that we could divert to. Um, we anchored 
and just kind of mellowed out for a while. Um, the biggest lesson when, when sailing is that uh, Mother Nature doesn't care about your calendar. She doesn't care when you have to be, where you have to be. It's all up. It's all out of your control. So once you figure that out and you adhere to that, sailing goes a lot better for you. <laughs> wow. See, see I, I love that. But before, before I get to my next question, I just want to point out to the audience, people that are watching live, if you have any questions for Amy, feel free to put them in the comments below the video, and we will try to get to those before the end. All right. So, um, so I think about this a lot. I think about how like days of the week, months and stuff like that are really a social construct, right? Like days are objective. Yeah. Like the, the sun comes up, it goes down. That's a day. I get that. The earth rotates, but in the year is, is objective. Cause you know, we get back to the same point, but, but everything in between there is just arbitrary cutting up of stuff. Right. And, well, uh, and that's really what you're saying, right? I mean, you're saying, Hey, you know, I mean, there's no such thing as a weekend. It's they're just a day. Exactly. Um, I mean, really, the only thing de defining out there is full moon. I, I, I can always tell you when there's a full moon, um, because that has different implications with, you know, the tides. And more often than not, uh, um, cruisers, as we call ourselves, love to have a full moon party. But other than that. <laughs> so, so let me ask this. What, if you had to pick, like, what, what's one takeaway that you would say, this is something that if I didn't get anything else from the whole trip, it would have been worth doing just for that? Oh, wow. Um, I, I think um, the memories that I have with my kids. Um, right? I mean, we, we, we can sit down and have family conversations at dinner like no one else, you know, Oh, Hey, remember that time we spent the night on a volcano? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, getting scuba certified in, in Fiji or, um, wow. going to a pig roast in Tonga. Um, you know, it just that, um, yeah. you know, you were asking me, you know, Oh, didn't you miss all your stuff? I mean, learning to trade stuff for experiences. Yeah, so. that's great. So, yeah. so that that's a big thing for Jillian and I both. We've been talking about this a lot lately. Um, so scuba diving, that's amazing, obviously. But is there anything like, so I've never been, I've, I mean, I've been out on like a cruise ship, but that's a little bit different than what you're talking Ooh. about. Right? So I've never <laughs> been out on the ocean, uh, you know, with the kind of connectedness that I think you must feel like. I know when I was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro last year, I felt really connected to the world in a way that yeah. I don't normally feel from sleeping under the stars and, and, you know, being, you know, really on the mountain for s several days in a row. Uh, I got to believe you felt something like that when you're out in the middle of the ocean for days on end and it's just absolutely. your small family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, you know, uh, you don't anchor at night when you're sailing across an ocean. I mean, you're, you're constantly rotating who's in charge of the boat. You're watching the sunrise one day, you're watching it, you know, set the next, um, you're constantly pulling up weather grids and you're looking at, um, you know, w when are we about to dip through the, the equator? Where can we pick up some trade winds? I mean, you're relying on nature to get you to where you're trying, trying to go. Um, you're not only relying on nature, but you're also, um, you, you have to do what nature says. Ah. Um, so, I mean, it, yeah, there, there's a very strong connection between you and, and the outside world. You have um, to do what nature says. That is. Yeah. That's or, you can, or you can die. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um. Yeah, that might be a lesson for everyone, actually. You have to do what nature says or you can die, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's, kind of a, that's kind of real. So that's yeah. the name of your book. Great. All right. So well, we'll I, have, I have a couple. Yeah, you have to do what nature says by Amy. So, <laughs> um, and that actually is like a great question. Do you plan on writing a book? Have you written a book? Uh, um, I know you've written some articles for uh, Wanderlust. Is it written mm -hmm. magazine? Yeah. 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 Um, I, maybe a solid, definite, maybe, um, <laughs> I, I've had a lot of family members, um, after the fact uh, of the trip and, and friends, um, and I say you should write a book and I've, and I've read other people's books. I've read books, um, while sailing about other people sailing and, um, it, they're enjoyable. And, uh, one of the things that I was insistent upon on the boat was that our daughters have to brush their teeth and keep a journal. 
Um, so they've got years worth of journals, which in the event that I decide to do a book, I will heavily rely on, on some of that. Just, you can read a page and you, you're instantly taken back. Yep. I totally remember that day. So if I do, I'll most likely shoulder tap them for their journals. Wow. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so no, journaling is huge, right? When you're, when you're traveling, it's something that like when I go back and look at my journals from when I'm traveling, and I don't always do it, but I always keep them when I do. Mm -hmm. um, they they just bring you right back. Yeah. Um, so I actually, you were talking about um, reading books about other people sailing the world. And I, I did read one by um, Robin Lee Graham um, a long time ago that was about that. And it's fascinating. Um, and he was a teenager and just sailed the world alone which is, a, I don't know if you read that or not, but that was a crazy, crazy book. And I was like, man, I can't even imagine being like 16 and being like, oh, I'm just going to sail around the world the second here. <laughs> uh, but but I, I actually can't even imagine it now. So I still yeah. want to circle back on that. Like, like, weren't you nervous about this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely nervous. Um, you know, uh, sailing um, was probably one of, the, was a time that I felt most alive. I mean, yeah. um, you know, not to sound dramatic, but I mean, you could easily die out there, you know, um, it, you know, I think we get f feeling so safe living in our homes with all our, our little necessities that we've got and you strip that all away. Uh, and you feel a little, little differently. <laughs> well, so. I mean, our houses are just holding nature back, right? Like you said, you have to do what nature <laughs> does. Like the house is like a giant, you know, F you to nature. Like we're going well, to I know. And actually them. one of our, one of my favorite interviews that we did was uh, with a gentleman um, who won a season of a show called Alone. I don't know if you've ever seen Alone, but it's about people who live in the wilderness. So I, okay. I love this whole yeah. um, thing. Uh, okay. Also, I noticed on your website, and this is just being, being goofy, but I noticed on your website, you have a donate button for people to yep. buy you a beer. Yes. How many people actually bought you beers? Um, quite a few. <laughs> Did they so, really? Oh, oh yeah. Fantastic. Um, so it, that was great. Um, our, you know, you've always got friends that'll sit on the sidelines and be like, yeah, right guys, you're, you're really going to sail off in a boat. And we did. And it was like, hell yeah, I'm going to buy you some beer. <laughs> that um, is so cool. Yeah. And you know, that was an easy way for family to help celebrate birthdays is, Hey, I bought you, bought you a round of beer, you know? Um, so yeah, it, I mean, don't don't think that it like funded the trip by any stretch, but it right. definitely was very nice when um, you'd roll into an anchorage and see, hey, you know, someone uh, many times strangers, people I'd never met before um, that would buy us a beer and just say, you know, thank you for taking us on your trip. This is this is awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. that is so fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, I just I, I'm so thrilled at this whole thing. And I. So I, again, I want to go backwards for a second, because I know what you did, you know, to you packed up your house, you sold your home, you sold your cars, got your paper, your affairs in order. Yeah. But where did you guys take sailing lessons? I know you said your husband took the sailing lessons and he was going to teach the rest of you. What did he do to prepare for that? He he took lessons out of San Diego. Um, okay. Yeah, I, that's all. <laughs> that's, I mean, I, I sent him down there and said, go find out something. And, and he did. So. so he went to San Diego and he was like, oh, I'm just going to walk into like a marina and be like, hey, I want to sail around the world. No. Like, can you teach yeah, me? No, I mean, like you can sign up for like certified oh, lessons. So. Yeah, sure, yeah. And I mean, you know, you were asking me, you know, were, you know, were you scared? He was scared. He oh, was wow. scared because, well, because I mean, this was pretty much his idea. And he was shocked when I was like, you know what, this sounds like a good one. Let's go. And then it was, it was him. Hey, you yeah. need to make sure that this boat is ready to go. I know nothing. Um, I'll work on the homeschool. I'll work on everything else. You need to, you know, cl climb up the mast and you need to be digging down in engines. I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. So his stress level was uh, quite high, probably for like the first nine months because he felt the responsibility for his entire family. One what, false move and, you know. And that, that actually leads me to a, another question, which is how did you choose your boat and how much did it cost you? Um, we chose our boat because of its layout. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, one of the, you know, although we said, hey, let's go out for 18 months. 
there was always in the back of our ma- our brains, I kind of hope this lasts longer. And one of the ways it was going to last longer is if we gave girl our girls separate cabins, if we didn't make them share the space. I mean, you're already sharing a 45 foot sailboat. Um, so really it was the layout. And then um, honestly, it came down to, to the price. Um, we, we spent about 60,000, I want to say. Wow. Um, That's yeah. Great. On our yeah. boat. Um, so, I mean, be, because you we're working from one little bucket of money. So whatever mm-hmm. I don't spend on the boat, then I can use to sail. Yeah. So. All right. So, so I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to get too much into the finances, but if you're spending three, $4,000 a month for four years, right. And you bought a $60,000 boat, you're saying it was a couple hundred thousand dollars total to do total. this. Like, yeah. Um, and, then you not- sold the, and then you sold the boat at the end. Right. Mm-hmm. And got some of the money back, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so like for the average person that's listening, that's a lot of money, but, but if you sell everything you have, it might not be that much money, right? Like how much equity do you have in your house? Like Jillian, well, can you sell yeah. your house and get that much money? I, I live in Southern California. I sure as heck hope so right now. <laughs> right. You know, what that, you know what that means, Jillian? I'm not allowing you to sell your house because you mm-hmm. cannot travel around the world in a boat right now. I refuse to allow it. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> I mean, we got, we got lucky in that we bought a house in 2009 for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's exactly how it, how it happened. Nice. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we were fortunate to, uh, to get into the real estate market at the right time. We sat on it for about four years. Um, and then that's, that's what we worked with. What, what did you do about insurance? Like health insurance? We didn't have any. Okay. Oh, so wow. You, you yeah. It. Um, so yeah, coming back to the states and paying eight hundred bucks a month for insurance. Don't get me started. Um, yeah, we 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 went without. Um, I think uh, maybe the first year we might have had like catastrophe insurance that cost us I don't know maybe like a hundred bucks a month or something. Um, but you go to places like Mexico or Fiji or Tonga or American Samoa, it's reasonable. It's, yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, I, I had dental work, I had teeth pulled uh, 25 bucks, you know, including the, uh, you know, the um, medication for afterwards. Um, my daughter uh, had an eardrum explode and it was like dripping blood out, you know, that oh was my gosh. Know, $35. Wow. Oh my gosh. How yeah, amazing. I mean, we, so my husband and I are somewhat prone to skin cancer and living on a boat, not the best of combinations, but when we were in San Miguel de Allende, there are uh, a lot of English speaking doctors that have been trained in the United States. And so when we went to the dermatologist, we wanted that because if someone's going to be telling me I have skin cancer, I wanna be able to hear it. (laughs) So of course we spent what they considered a fortune to go to an English speaking doctor and it was $50 a person. We're doing like, everything wrong in this country. Everything <laughs> is wrong. I mean, that's oh my, my copay God. right now for you know just to walk through the door. Yeah, oh. no, yeah, that's. I mean, my copay's yeah, it's around there, right? Yeah, I mean, and, uh, yeah. And I'm I'm sure. you, I, I I think I'm gonna have skin cancer a million times before I die because I burn instantly, and like I don't really have a choice. I try really hard. I can put like a yeah. hundred. SPF sunblock on and I burn in 15 minutes. So maybe I shouldn't sail around the world. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, but I don't know. Don't give it up. There's, you could just buy, you could just buy like $10,000 worth of sunblock and call it a day, Jeffrey. Yeah. We Wear a long, long sleeve shirts, hats. I'd have to, pants. I'd have to drop ship it around the world because I wouldn't be able to like, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to put it all on the boat, but you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, Amy, thank you so much. Everybody. Our guest was Amy Nance, who her website sailingwithterrapin.com. You can also find her on Instagram and Facebook and all those places, Twitter, uh, YouTube, sailing at Sailing with Terrapin. Uh, this was amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank I appreciate you. it very, very much. Uh, Jeff. Hey, we have a comment real quick. I want to share because I think this is great. Okay. So Tammy okay. said she's been following your journey. So she wanted That's to- That's awesome. Thank you. So yeah, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Stick uh, with us for a few minutes. Uh, Jeff and I will be right back, and we'll wrap up the show. Mm-hmm.
I'm sailing away. Okay. I don't know the rest of the words to come sail away. You know that song, right? Yeah, no, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> not, not enough that I'm going to sing it right now, though, if that's what you're wondering. Come sail away. Come sail away. I love that. I love that whole thing. I love if, I, so if I could get my husband on a boat, I would be gone tomorrow. So I, I don't want to sail around the world. Like, it doesn't even appeal to me. I wouldn't mind... Um, going certain places in the world that you can only get to by boat, mm -hmm. but, uh, but sailing around the world for multiple years, it's not my thing, but, but here's what I love about the story, right? It's um, so authentic and it's so what anybody can do. It's like when we had um, Jeff Alt on and he talked about walking the Appalachian trail and I was like, I don't want to walk the Appalachian trail, but I was also like, it's so cool that like somebody can just pack up and walk the Appalachian trail. Right. And I mean, that's the thing about it. It's like, I, I want the people I know that have dreams like this to do these things. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the thing. And I mean, I do the stuff that I want to do um, some of the time, but like, I'm going to move to the Caribbean faster now. She's just, I've just decided I'm going to, Oh no! I'm going to pack up and move sooner than oh, I thought. It's, it's, it's over for me. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be no longer an American citizen. <laughs> you know, um, I think maybe you should look at dual citizenship. It's just a suggestion. We'll see. <laughs> Actually, we'll we see. should get someone on to talk about citizenship. The dual citizenship? Yeah, yeah that would be abs fun. absolutely. Hey, everybody, before Jeff and I go we gotta away. Bring, oh, but before we, before we get to that, we need to bring Amy back, if she's up for it, to talk about living in China. Because that's like an entirely different topic that we didn't even talk about. Oh, I know. And it was right. funny. I was going to dig into it, but I was like, no, Jillian, stay on topic. And I was like, I had I had to work really hard for that. So uh, everybody- I don't know where she lived in China. China's a huge place. I know. I know. That was one of my questions. It's like, well, where did you live in China? Did you ever get food poisoning? Because everybody I know ever gets food poisoning I didn't get China. food poisoning in China. I might have gotten COVID when I was in China, but I didn't get food poisoning. I, I, we, we could actually bring her back right now and ask her. No, 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 no. Let's, you we, sure? let's yeah, no, right. we're gonna wrap up the show. All right. Uh let's and we'll bring her back another time talking about living in China. Everybody, I want to remind you that we are in the middle of a kind morning challenge. Actually, we're not really in the middle of it. We just started today. Yeah, we're like halfway through the first day. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not even yeah. So we uh, we want you guys to join us for the kind morning challenge. If you don't know about it, it means uh, you're going to do an act of kindness every day. It doesn't have to be random. It can be a planned act of kindness. Uh, you're going to invest in yourself 40 minutes a day on uh, improving yourself, whatever that is to you. Uh, and then ND means no distractions or no drinking. Both Jeff and I have decided to stop drinking alcohol for 40 days. And then morning, you're going to have a morning routine of some sort. So my morning routine has been meditation, prayer, and yoga every morning. Not a lot, not too long. Uh, and by and every morning, you mean this morning, like, because we're in the first day. No, no, I'm saying I'm committing to that every morning for the next 40 oh, days. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. 39 so, more days. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so, so also, if people want to learn more about The Kind Morning, um, we've done several videos on it, and one of them is pinned to the top of the Facebook group right now. So if you're in the Last Life Ever private group, you can go to the top post and you will see a video all about the kind morning challenge and we would encourage you to join even if you didn't start today you can always start tomorrow and your 40 days will just end one day after us or you can do a kind morning 39 it's fine yeah too. yeah so, it's gonna make you better i mean i'll tell you the one thing i like about the kind morning jillian is that um the last time we did it I, I did something I've never done before, right? I started writing fiction and then I got a story published just like that, like literally in 40 days. Like I no, I don't know, I'm never going to be a professional writer because it's not a passion of mine, but mm -hmm. I was able to get my story published. And to me, let's just proof that, you know, you can make these kind of, you know, small improvements in a short amount of time. Yeah. And that's a, I mean, I think that's a pretty big deal, like to get published in just by, you know, investing in yourself 40 minutes a day for 40 days. And you actually, it, you didn't even invest in yourself for 40 days. It was less than that because you got it published within that. It was like 36 within, days. Yeah, 30, like that. Oh, okay. Right. 36 I, was, I was romanticizing it perhaps. All right. So here's my joke. A pirate walks into a bar with a ship steering wheel in his pants. The bartender says, hey, did you know you've got a steering wheel in your pants? I did I, actually know this one.
<laughs> Aye, sir, that it be, says the pirate. It's driving me nuts. Yeah, I kind of like <laughs> I kind of like the variant where it says it's been driving me nuts all day. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a joke, Jeffrey? No, you just took mine. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, all right, know, everybody. I, I know. You know what? Actually, I didn't remember to come up with a joke. I um I probably do have a joke. Okay, so what's blue and smells like red paint. All right, everybody. I'm Jillian Sidoti, and this is Jeffrey Hulse. And we we want to remind you to what, Jeffrey? To live. Wait, I got to answer my joke. It's blue paint. Okay, good. good this good, is a right. different variant of the joke I normally tell, which is what's red and, and smells like blue paint. Um, all right. But, but we do want to remind everyone to live the very best version of their last life ever. Never gonna fight for freedom.